Hello, this is Steve Shaw for AcrylicPouring.com, and today I want to talk about the unsung hero of the pouring art. It's called the pour box. No matter how many paintings you make, you need something underneath your canvas to catch all the drippings, and that's what a pour box does. So whether you work at your kitchen table in a little bitty tiny area, a pour box would be a great thing to have. But even if you're in a much larger studio, a pour box is a great thing to have. So I'm gonna start off by showing you the pour box that I've been using for about six months now. But if you don't have a pour box, I'm gonna show you how to make a simple one. If you do have a pour box, I'm gonna show you how you might be able to upgrade a little bit to something a little fancier. Um, so let's take a look. Here's the pour box that I've been using for a really long time. And I tell you, it is a mess. I don't know if you can see down in there, but there's just all kinds of stuff going on. Layers and layers of old paint. Um, but then, it, gosh, it's really, really heavy now. But it's, again, the box is to keep things um, from being quite so messy. The size box that you use for a pour box really depends on the size canvas you like to work on. I typically like to work on larger canvases, um, like a 16 by 20. So the, this box that I've been using is the perfect size for that because it'll fit within the box sides and I can rotate it around and let the drips go off into the box so they're not going on the floor or not going on the table. Now, if you typically work a lot smaller, let's say this is an eight by eight little canvas. If you work uh, eight by eight or 10 by 10, the kind of smaller sizes, you could probably simply use a box about this size. This is, I think, 13 inches by 13 inches, and I picked it up, I believe, at Walmart when I was buying a bunch of crayons. Um, but that would work great for smaller canvases like this. Um, as far as where to get your boxes, my favorite place to get a box is actually um, Costco or Sam's, because they're gonna have these larger boxes that fruit and bread, things like that come in. But again, wherever you can find the box that'll, um, that's the right size, just grab it. Typically, I don't want them obviously really, really deep. You want the sides maybe just a couple of inches deep. So this would work, and if you work small, get you a box like this. You may need to put some tape around the sides to kind of sure it up, tighten it up. This one's pretty solid, so I don't think I need to tape the edges. Occasionally, you'll find a box that has holes in the bottom of it, and obviously you'd want to tape those up and you could use really any kind of tape. Masking tape would work great. Um, I've got some packaging tape that if this had holes in it, I would just lay down a, a layer of packaging tape on there. But the second thing you want to do after you have your box all squared away and solid is you want to be able to lift your canvas up out of the box so it's not sitting in the, in the paint. The easiest way to do that is plastic cups. Just get a couple of plastic cups, place them so that your canvas will sit right on top of them. I think I've got a canvas here that's a little bit bigger than the old one, but it, you want it to fit inside the square area here to kind of hold it up. And again, as you pour, the drips would go inside the box there. There is a major drawback about this design though, and I discovered it with my last pour box. A lot of people like to save the skins, and the skins are simply the drippings that are gonna come off and end up in the bottom of your pour box. They can be absolutely beautiful, and I know a lot of people use them to make jewelry, earrings, necklaces, that sort of thing. So if you want to save those, you may not want to use the cups underneath. Um, I'm gonna show you another method in just a moment that will uh, free up the bottom of your box so that you can save those uh, the skins. Um, another good box would be if you like to work a little bit larger. I've got a box here, right, that I just picked up at my Costco, I believe, that had snacks and stuff in it for the kids. Again, put it in here. If there are any holes, you'd tape them up. Put down your cups if you don't want to save the skins. And then, boom, you're ready to go. Now, if you want to upgrade a little bit, which is what I'm going to do today, this box has served me well. You've done a great job, poor box. Uh, like I said, six months or so of paintings are in here, but I have not been able to save or haven't saved any of the skins, which I would like to start doing now. So what I have done is I've gone and found a nice big box at the Costco, and it is a 
King Hawaiian bread. Apparently some bread came in this box. I'm gonna go ahead and work on top of my old pour box. And what I decided to do on this one, which was a little bit different, instead of putting the cups down, I had some little aluminum rods that were left over from another project. Um, you don't have to have aluminum rods. You can go down and use little wooden dowels, which are pretty cheap, and they're gonna be at any hardware store, and you can get them different thicknesses. They don't have to be anything uh, super thick because the canvas that we're working on is not going to be very heavy. So what you're going to want to do is, um, depending on the size of your box, you're going to want to put some rods across here. And you would measure your distance from one side of the box to the other, add about an inch onto each end, and cut your rods. I have four going here. And then you want to spread them out pretty equally throughout the box. Mine, I think, and I have to confess, I uh, am not a, I'm not real big on measuring, so I kind of eyeballed these, and I simply took a pair of scissors, measured down a little bit with my thumb or my finger, poked a hole here, eyeballed across to the other side, poked a hole through here. Obviously, if you're poking holes in your box, don't poke a hole in your finger, because that would be a bad thing, but poke a hole, slide your wooden dowel or your metal rod in, go through, and then come back the other side. At first I thought I might need to put some tape or hot glue out here, but honestly, I think these things are gonna stay fine just the way they are. You could put more than four. I think four is gonna be fine though. And this really, it took me maybe 15, 20 minutes to probably 15 minutes. One, two, three, four, eight. Had eight holes I had to poke in my box and I had to cut uh, four rods, which was actually two rods cut into two. So I have my four pieces here. But the great thing that this is going to do for me is leave this bottom nice and open. Now, I went to the Dollar Tree and for, of course, one dollar, I picked up these chopping mats that were in the little kitchen uh, area. And they're just two pieces, two pieces are in here and it's plastic. And what I'm gonna do with these is lay them underneath here. And now when the drips come down, I'll be able to peel them off of this and put them in a box, put them aside. Um, my sister may use them to make some jewelry or give them away to somebody who might find use for them, but I don't wanna be wasting those anymore. So this is how I would make a pour box. The, uh, that's really about it. It's really not difficult, but this is kind of your work, uh, your workstation, your workbench if you're pouring, and uh, that's it. I hope you've enjoyed the video. So when, when you're ready to make your pour box, I think my biggest piece of advice would be don't overthink it and don't make it more complicated than it needs to be. All you need is a box, some plastic to go on the bottom of your box, and maybe plastic cups if you're gonna hold your paint, your canvas up that way, or a couple of wooden or little metal rods to hold your painting up. Now, no acrylic pouring video would be complete without doing a pour. So I'm gonna go ahead and do a pour right now and break this baby in. So, taking out away my old box. Old box, you've served me well, great job, thank you. But it's time to go in with the new pour box. And everything is in place. I'm gonna scoot in here a little bit. And I happen to have a nice 10 by 20 inch canvas. And sure enough, it's sitting up nicely right on the rods. And let's do, I've got some really bright summer colors. It is bright, bright pink, this beautiful tealish blue. And a light, light, light uh, purple. And so what I'm gonna do is, I think I'm gonna, gonna do, and I might pour in a little bit of this dark blue, to pour or to swipe, dirty cup or swipe. Let's do, um, let's just put it in a cup and do a flip cup and see what happens. All right. I'm gonna put a couple, I've got an old cup here, couple of drops of silicone uh, into, I'll put it into, one, two, three, a little bit more. One, two, three, four. Put four drops into each of those. Stir it up a little bit. I'm not gonna put any silicone into this little light whitish purple. I'm gonna start off with a little bit of that. 
mix in some of this pink. Wow, that's crazy pink. Layer these on here. It'll get us a nice summertime pour going on. Wow. And a little bit more. I'm thinking that's probably enough paint right there to cover my canvas. Oh, this is already looking really cool in the cup. Check that out. Getting some nice cells, some nice color in there. Okay, flip cup time. Gonna save that dark blue for another time. Flip. And I'm gonna slide it around a little bit. And let her go. Oh, I love that part. Wow, this is looking really pretty. I've already got great cells happening in here. Now I'm going to tilt this around a little bit back and forth. Man, that blue is showing up a lot more. I had a lot of pink in there. I thought that would kind of take over. All right. Oh, there goes my first drips into the bottom of my new pour box. But this time I'll be able to save the, uh, the drips of skins. And pulling it on down. Come on down. Oh, that's pretty. Gonna bring it down to this corner. All right, looking really nice. I'm gonna stretch it this way just a little bit. Oops, that looks pretty. I'm gonna go back a little ways. Um. I'm gonna go ahead and torch this thing since my torch is right here. As you heard me to say, heard me say before, if you're ever gonna torch, just make sure that there's nothing around your pouring area that can catch on fire. Got some cells popping through. But this is one where the torch really isn't having a whole huge effect on here, which is fine. Well, we got some stuff happening down there. Okay. Well, that's it. That is the first pour painting of my brand new pour box. Thank you very much for watching this video and feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like the content, please hit subscribe and give our video a thumbs up. And remember, pretty much all the videos I make are gonna be for sale at my Etsy store. So please go to etsy.com and search for Steve Shaw and you will be able to find this painting there at a very reasonable price. Thanks you guys, bye-bye.